All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're going to be talking about the X-ray circuit. How does the X-ray circuit actually work to power the X-ray tube? Coming up here at How Radiology Works. First off, we know our X-ray tube works by doing two things, right? Number one, boiling off electrons from a filament. So we need a way to heat a filament up. Number two, providing a potential such that we pull those electrons from the cathode where they're made over to the anode, which is a piece of heavy metal. So those electrons hit that heavy metal and then out come x-rays. We're gonna be plugging into our wall power at the hospital. And then how can we take that and convert it to what we need to accomplish those two tasks? You're definitely gonna wanna draw this out yourself too. Start with a blank sheet of paper, see what you can get the first time. Just like when you're learning something like geography, you draw the map out yourself. You can't just watch a video and expect to really take it in. This is a good resource along with drawing it out yourself. From the wall power, we have our primary AC input. See our video on AC versus DC. And we also have a video coming out soon on transformers. Transformers don't work with DC current. Transformers are really required here in order to change the voltage and change the current at different parts in our circuit. They really require this AC current. AC is alternating current, just going up and down quickly. We also have our breaker here for safety. This is again, the primary circuit that's coming from the wall. We then have what we call an auto transformer or a self transformer. You can see our transformer video as well. From this single coil of wire, the actual conversion is happening of the voltage and it's a variable conversion which can be changed based on changing the taps along this auto transformer. This part of the circuit up here is related to the KV. This part down here is the one that's gonna have the interface with the filament circuit. Right here is gonna drive the potential and right here is how we're gonna boil off electrons. In the primary circuit, we have an interface where we're gonna have a transformer. I've only drawn the part on the primary circuit so far, and now I'm gonna draw the part on the secondary circuit. Here's our secondary circuit. Again, from the primary to the secondary circuit, the interface is a transformer. And this is a step up transformer because we wanna go up in terms of voltage. Typically, we're gonna be running at 30, to 150 kilovolts for our secondary circuit. That's gonna provide the potential across the X-ray tube itself. We have AC coming in. So this is an alternating current right here coming in. And then we need something such as a high frequency in, in order to convert that closer to a DC KVP signal. We don't wanna have the KVP changing dramatically during the scan itself. See our video on KVP waveforms and on rectifiers to really understand the idea here, we have something called diodes, which only let the current flow one direction. And if you configure them like this, you essentially can get something that comes close to a constant DC signal is not perfect. What we've done is we've gone from our primary circuit, we've stepped up in voltage. So we have many more turns here on the secondary side than on the primary side, because when you have more turns, that's when you can step up in voltage. And then we have a rectifier, which takes it from an alternating current to something close to a DC current or direct current. Finally, we have a filament circuit. The filament circuit, some people call the heat circuit, because essentially what you're trying to do is heat up a coil of wire such that it will actually have what we call thermionic emission, where the electrons will get boiled off of that really hot wire. This is called a rheostat, and the rheostat is actually just a way that you can vary the resistance. So depending on what you have coming in, you wanna vary what we call the load or the amount of resistance here coming into our filament circuit. In this case, when we wanna actually go down in voltage with our transformer, that going down in voltage is going to mean that we're going up in current. Again, see our video on transformers. So we actually are going to have fewer turns on this filament side here than on the input side here from the primary. This is a step down transformer, which is gonna step down in voltage, up in current. So this is gonna make for a lot of electrons flowing through 
that filament coil to really heat it up so that we can get a nice good space charge. Like P can be determined by this secondary circuit here where you're actually pulling those electrons across. This filament circuit here is going to be setting up basically the heat so that we can boil those electrons off. The filament circuit then is connected to the actual filament. A lot of times systems will have multiple, so you can actually change this in the circuit itself. And only one of the filaments will be connected at one given time. Then that filament that's connected, it's being heated up. The amount that it's being heated up is dependent on the current that's running through here. So as the current goes up, the temperature gets hotter of this wire. As the temperature gets hotter of the wire, there's gonna be more electrons boiled off. As more electrons are being boiled off, there will be more electrons that can get pulled across. It's the KV or the kilovolt difference between here and here. Ideally, that KV is just equal to the KVP, but sometimes there can be ripple in the KV. And then the MA is determined by the filament circuit. The rate at which the electrons are boiled off is gonna determine the rate at which the electrons can come across here. So even though we're used to thinking of circuits as connecting some things with a wire, and then the electrons are gonna be running in the wire, here the electrons are running in the free vacuum. Nonetheless, it's the case that they're going from the cathode to the anode. When they hit the anode, the x-rays are gonna be coming out. If you can draw this level of detail out, get out your colored pencils or your highlighters or whatever, Don't get totally freaked out if it looks a little different in different textbooks. Just understand the basic components where you have your AC current coming in, your circuit breaker, your auto transformer, and then again here, this is the interface between the primary and the secondary circuits. Right here, you have the actual rectifying part of the circuit. Again, this looks a little bit different. I really prefer to see the kind of diamond shape, but you can draw it out like this and if you follow the connections they actually lead to the same thing as this kind of diamond shape but this is our rectifying circuit here and down here is the filament or the heating circuit which again is connected after we come out of the auto transformer through the rheostat and is connected with a transformer so those are the basics of your x-ray circuit if you haven't already see our videos on the transformer and on the cave waveforms and rectifiers such that you really understand all the parts of your x-ray circuit